Sarah Obad, we hear from Horse Racing Nation, joined by Greg Wolf, Naira Handicapper, Fox Sports Analyst, and first time having you on the Horse Racing Nation YouTube channel. First time chatting with you myself. Greg, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate the invite. Looking forward to it. We, we have our final, you know, big weekend pretty much of the year coming up when the last grade one, so it's going to be exciting. And that race you're referring to, obviously, the Cigar Mile coming up on Saturday. We're also going to be discussing the Go for Juan Stakes, which is a grade three for those older fillies and mares. And that's where we'll be starting with this. But, Greg, first question I have for you, something you talk about a lot on air. You're a Thoroughgraph user. Can you tell me a little bit about what it is about that product and that data set that really appeals to you and what sort of edge that might give you as a handicapper? Yeah, this is the Jerry Brown's product. And honestly, I... I I don't handicap without it. Um, unfortunately, it didn't come out before I got to uh, use this, do this segment for, uh, for Saturday. But it, it gives you, I think, a, a big edge just in terms of seeing what kind of figures horses run. And, you know, it takes into account ground loss, you know, weight carried. But, you know, particularly if horses have wide trips and have to cover extra ground in a race. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll factor in, too, if there are track biases and things like that. But a lot of times, too, you can find patterns with horses who are, you know, potentially coming up to the biggest or, you know, a big race to fire a big shot. Not necessarily the biggest race of their career, what I was going to say, but, you know, pair up numbers where it looks like they're going to take a big move forward. Um, or sometimes other patterns where a horse has run a huge effort, comes back, runs, you know, bounces terribly off that and then moves forward. Or if a horse runs lights out, it's come out of nowhere and probably is not going to back that up or may take a big bounce. So, you know, it depends. Some people don't believe in that theory. Others do, but uh, with the bounce theory particularly. But um, those figures for me, just uh, I, I feel a lot more confident going in with it. It's not the only thing you should use. Um, everyone looks at, I think, different types of figures and things like that. And I use a couple of things I use, but most predominantly I use Thoroughgraph. Um, but it's one thing to definitely include that, that I think gives you a big edge. But you also got to look line for line at the past performances too, because you can catch things in there that, um, you know, sometimes horses run unexpected races and you can find little gems within the past performances. For sure. I think it's so important to diversify your handicapping arsenal. And I know that thoroughgraphs, um, while they're widely used, I know that that's not everybody's go-to. So I know that's something you mentioned. So I just wanted your take on that a little bit. And our favorite going into this go for one stakes. I'm curious what your thoughts are on her and how she's looked in the thoroughgraphs in the past. And you don't have them for this particular race going in, but she's been running some big numbers lately, the best of her career. And I'm a little suspect of what we're going to get from her this time. What was your read on battle bling? It's interesting. I mean, she has really become a different Philly. The last few starts, she's reeled off three in a row. She's been very good at, you know, winning those at three different racetracks as well. So anytime you can take your game on the road and continue to produce and, and win finish, that's saying something, I think. Um, it's been interesting. I, she's, she's been a lot more forwardly placed. And that, I think that's been a reason for her success. The last few starts, it, it's a tough read. I mean, has that been because, She's just coming out of some slower races where there's not a lot of pace early on, potentially. But she was successful. She wasn't successful, but she she battled Bank Sting like tooth and nail uh, when they met. It was back in March of this year, and she was nowhere near the lead in that race. But she was still you – know, you can see she was making a bid and, and coming on. But it's been when she's been more forwardly placed and she's really kind of gotten over the hump and been successful. There's some other speeds in this race. I don't know if she's necessarily going to be the one who's in front on the lead in here. Um but she's going to be closer, I think, and that's going to make her effective. I thought, I thought she was a major player in this race. Um, I love just her tenacity, too. Um, that, that race of going back to against Bank Sting back in March, she showed in that race, and she showed in the last three races, too, she likes to fight. And I love to see that, that will and that desire from someone, too. Um, I just think Rob Atris has done a tremendous job. He's had her in peak form right now. So, yeah, I think she's a major player. Well... I have to disagree. <laughs> I think she's okay. a little bit phony okay. going into here. I think that the main reason why I kind of think that is, for one, she's only won once at this mile distance, and I feel like her best success might be going a little bit longer, might prefer a little bit more real estate in here. Um, she's only won once at this distance, breaking her maiden uh, at Horseshoe Indianapolis back in 2020. So I don't know that the mile necessarily is the best distance for her, not that she can't handle it and she's obviously in the best form lately. I also don't know what kind of cozier trip she could possibly get 
than she had last time out in the turn back the alarm, setting those very slow fractions early on. And I think that was more, like you said, just a function of is there any pace in this race at all? She's been more forwardly placed lately when she was kind of more of a closer in the past. I don't know that she ends up getting a similar setup in a spot like this with other horses stretching out a little bit further that have shown some more speed like the seven Dr. B and a couple of others. And I'm really suspect of the company that she's been facing in the last two starts, because I don't really think much of coach who she beat two back in the Twix, who came back and regressed significantly in the Chaluki to finish fourth. And there uh, she went from a 90 to a 67 buyer, which isn't the kind of move that you want to see for a horse next time out. And then also nostalgic who almost nipped her at the wire last time out in the turn back the alarm, kind of a nothing effort in the comely also regressed in buyer figures. So I just don't love that. There's two horses that finished second to her with her two best career figures that came back to do kind of nothing and really regress next time out. The problem with that is I just don't know who in this field is necessarily so much tougher than the other horses that she has been facing before. Um, other than a horse that you mentioned, Bank Sting, who they've battled before in the past, Bank Sting being able to get the jump on her, Bank Sting lately coming off a little bit of a freshening last time out when she finished second. So I think that Bank Sting may be getting back to what we've seen from her as her preferred distance of this mile, obviously loves it at Aqueduct six of her eight wins coming here. Um, and I think that maybe she's rounding back into form where I, I kind of feel like battle bling either she's a new and improved horse and she's going to just totally be this kind of mid nineties figure horse going forward, or we're going to see a regression back to who she kind of truly is. And I'd rather take bank staying uh, at a little bit of a better price. Yeah. I mean, I'll end up bank staying in a minute. I just, you know, back to battle bling. She's not my pick in this race, but I, I think she, she, wouldn't shock me at all if she won it. Anytime you see a horse who's your first or second in 14 of her 21 starts, tells you a lot about what kind of what kind of horse she is. I mean, she just fights every single time. She shows up every single time. And I don't think she doesn't need to be on the lead to be at her best. Like one of her best races she ever ran was against Bank Sting when she came from off of it and showed her fight. But having I mean, I have such a huge love for Bank Sting. Uh, talk about a game mare now. She's five year old mare. She's eight for 13 in her career. You mentioned the record at Aqueduct. She loves it at Aqueduct. She's six for eight here. And the, you know, the interesting thing for me, yeah, she regressed last time. Um, every time she's come off sort of a short layoff, each of the last three times she's done it now, she's regressed and she's bounced back that second start off the bench. So it, it's, I think that's enough to say we have a definitive pattern now. I think she's definitely going to move forward and run the, the kind of race we're used to seeing from her now, her second start off the rest. So, she also happened to bring me one of the biggest scores in my life. So I have huge love for oh, her when I singled her to pick five, but she's just fun to watch too. Whoops. One of these New York breads, um, who is just very game and you have Rosario on uh, as well. She can be tactical. Um, I, she's, a, I, I just love, I, I hope we get, you know, the good bank sting. One of the things to watch is, the, you know, it's going to be a, very likely going to be a wet track this weekend. It looks like there's a very good chance. It's going to rain a uh, good portion of the day on Saturday. That's only going to help Bank Sting, I think. She loves an off-track. I mean, she runs well on anything, but four for seven on an off-track, she, she's a known com commodity uh, on that kind of a surface. So I think that's good for her. I think the other one, too, Dr. B, um, she was not going to be Goodnight Olive. I'm, I'm kicking myself still not taking Goodnight Olive more seriously going to that Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint because it was such a limited campaign. She was so much the best in that division. Um, and I go back and look at that race in Saratoga when I had a chance to see her this year, and she was so dominant in that race. But Dr. B, uh, obviously not good enough to beat her, but she, she ran good against Boston Post Road last time out, who's just kind of maybe a cut below some of the better disc staffers in the country. I think Dr. B is an interesting runner in here, too. Every time Butch Reed brings – runners to new york um he usually means business for sure i mean that kind of seems like the other horse to go to um a quick glance for this race i'm a little nervous about the distance for her. she hasn't tried this mile yet um but early speed always dangerous and especially if you get a situation where nobody goes with her um i rather tease riding so that hurts your price a little bit but yeah. certainly uh a capable contender in here you mentioned that battle bling wasn't your top pick is that somebody else that we haven't talked about yet. No, I, I'm actually, I'm going to go with bank sting. I know it's price is not going to be great, but I, I think she gets it done here. I think she's going to run an improved race. I'm, I don't have morning line. It's not out yet. Um, she, I would think she's probably going to be your favorite in this race. Um, but I, I got to stick with her in here. All right. Well, you and me both will be riding bank sting, hopefully to the winner's circle. We'll turn the 
the page over to that last grade one in New York, the cigar mile handicap. And I have to ask you because it's a question that's going around a little bit. Is there a case for Zandon for champion three-year-old male with a win in this race? No. <laughs> uh, in my opinion, no, he's not even the conversation. Uh, to me, it is, it's Taba, it's Cyberknife, and it's Epicenter. Um, I, I believe Epicenter's going to win it just on the merits of how consistent he was throughout the year. Um, runner-up in the Derby, runner-up in the Preakness. Um, the Travers obviously stamped him as the top three-year-old in the country. I think that's enough to seal it for him. I don't think he's the most talented three-year-old in the country. I think Tabe is the most talented three-year-old in the country. I think there's a good chance Tabe is going to be horse of the year next year. But Tabe can make it interesting um, if you know if if he lines up in the Malibu and wins. If that's if that's on the docket for them, I still think it should probably be epicenter, even though he only has that one grade one. Um, but it's an interesting argument. Um, and Cyberknife too, as good as he ran in the Breeders' Cup with multiple grade ones, I still think the Travers and a runner-up in the Derby is more impressive a little bit than, than the campaign Cyberknife put together. Um, but you can make arguments across the board. What did you think? Well, I think it's a muddy division, and I think that's why people are talking about it so much, because you can kind of make a case for very, um, very different horses with different paths to that championship. But I don't think that... I, the way that he would have to win here and also who else would have to be in this field, I think that it's it's just not a possibility going into here. But obviously a win in here would, would help those people that are trying to make that argument, um, the ones that are. I just, I have a tough time taking a horse at even money that we haven't seen win in so long. And the way that he runs, I don't think that he wants to necessarily be close early as we've seen him have to be in some of his races because of the lack of pace or the short fields. And so then that's my other question. Where, where does the pace come from in here? Does someone get an easy lead? Who might that be? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, baby Yoda coming out of here, um, I think, I believe he had a temperature and that's why he, he was wound up not being entered, but pace wise, you, you have, Norm Cash throwing an outlier to kind of set up for potentially double crown. It was that big long shot winner of the Kelso. I'm, mind control can be close, but I don't think he wants to be in the lead in this spot. And I'm interested in White of Barrio cutting back in distance. So actually has sprint speed, legit sprint speed. First start of his career, he's actually in the lead going six and a half at Gulfstream. Um, he, he's interesting to me. The three-year-olds in this race, I think, are very interesting. But yet, yeah, Zandon, to me, you know, back to your, your point about hardware, I think next year he, he's got a big chance maybe to be in the conversation for maybe an Eclipse Award. You know, obviously we'll see what he does going, turning the page to next year, but this is the race that's important for him to kind of set it up for 2003, what, 2023. What kind of horse is he going to be? You have so many big retirements. Flight line, life is good. Olympiad, they're all gone. Um, so who is there in this division? He could certainly be one of those big players. I, I'm with you. I mean, he was so far back in that Pennsylvania Derby, but I, I give him a little bit of a pass because he was down on the inside on the rail. Um, you know, he's obviously he's in post two uh, on Saturday, but I think this is a horse that can be a little bit closer. And, you know, everyone thought going longer for him, he looked like at the Derby, he's going to win that race early in the stretch. I'm like, Oh boy, here we go. That's Sandin's race. And he just didn't finish. And he wasn't able to do it again, you know, against epicenter and the Travers Pennsylvania Derby. He's just not as good as table, I believe. So maybe going shorter, maybe he's a miler. Um, we'll find out. I think he's going to be really tough in this spot. I think Rosari is going to try and have him a little bit closer. Um, and I don't think it's going to be some hot freakish pace. And just, I think he's got to stay somewhat close to keep contact with the field. He, for me is the horse to beat in this race. Um, yeah, we'll see how short the price is. Is that, is that the morning line? Uh, even money. Yep. Yeah. yeah wow. <laughs> um, why to borrow to me though, is intriguing cutting back a distance and the fact that he is quick and, and he's classy, but I, to me, uh, Zandon, this is, this is his race to show who he is and, and hopefully become a really good four-year-old next year. And for mind control, he's, he's a good story. It's going to be the last start of his career. It's kind of an underappreciated horse. Um, but I just, wow, I look at that race, and I, I know that horse was getting out on him, and that's why he got put up for the win in that Park Stewart Mile. It's a Pennsylvania bred who I thought he should have just rolled by if he was still the mind control we knew. So I'd love to see him go out on top, but I, I think these three-year-olds are kind of the now horses. 
Yeah, I mean, Mind Control always makes it interesting, doesn't he? He really fights you for it, but you never really see him win convincingly. Um, so I think we're in for an exciting race when he's in there, but who knows if he's going to be the one that comes out on top in the battle. And and also, I mean, the second choice of 5-2 to two on the morning line, you're going to get a short price on him because I feel like he and Zin are kind of those known names that win these kinds of races that you feel like you can trust. Um, White of Barrio, I, I'm not totally convinced on his quality, but I think that if if he gets an aggressive ride and he ends up on the lead early with this cutback, I think that you're right that he has a big chance to get an advantage on some of these other horses in here that might be a little bit better than him. But if he gets the jump on them, I mean, that's good news for him. Um, we do have a sprinter coming in from California stretching out, but I feel like he's more of a closing sprinter. So he's not really going to get the setup that I think he would need. Um, and then, I mean, we have those two for Norm Cash, like you said, the uh, the 42 to one upset winner of the Kelso. Um, <laughs> did, did you have your eye on him that day or not so much? Uh, I did not. I was shocked actually when that happened. I, I did not see him as a player in that race. So yeah, t- I mean, th- the unfortunate thing is, yeah, if you, if you liked him that day um, or you know, the price is going to be nowhere near that. So to him back that, even that figure that he ran last time out, that is nowhere near good enough to, to me to win on this, uh, against this field. He'd have to take another big move forward. Five-year-old end of the year. I just don't see it happening, but no, I did not like him in the Kelso. All right. Well, you could have hindsight handicapped your way to that one. If you wanted, I wouldn't have told anybody, but no, I didn't either. I was not, uh, I was not having my eye on him in there. And also, I feel like he's another horse that's kind of pace compromised in a spot like this. So I'm with you. I mean, I think that this is a race that Zandon should win. And if he doesn't, then are you looking at a horse that just maybe doesn't have that will to win? Yeah, it's a good question with him. Because, yeah, honestly, um, it just looked like I, you can forgive horses for the Derby. Mile and a quarter, just a lot of horses don't want to do that. Um, it's It's you know, a distance they're only probably going to do once in their life. I can forgive him that Derby. Um, but it just seems like a couple opportunities that Jim Dandy as well just didn't go by, but I mean, he didn't go by a horse who's probably going to be a champion. That's a pretty good horse. He didn't get by an FS center. So to say, does he not have the will to go by? Well, there's one or two horses that are incredibly talented horses, Tabe as well. Um, who he wasn't able to get by. It might be a little unfair to say that he doesn't have that will to get by horses like that. Um, so I want to see what he does. I mean, to a, you know, a horse, he's still the end of his three-year-old campaign. He's probably going to be at his best getting a little bit older now. Maybe we'll see the best of him at four and, and going forward, hopefully on Saturday. Hopefully. I think we'd be, we'd be good to go into 2023 with one of those stars to kind of look forward to in the older male division, because like you mentioned, everybody that we kind of had our eye on this year is, is off to the breeding shed. Uh, and so we're kind of lacking in a way of those superstars to really get attached to as fans. And, and I'm hopeful that he ends up being kind of one of those to take that step forward. And, and we see something from him uh, hinting at what we could see next year because mind control last start. So we can't get too attached there. Um, he'll be, he'll be heading off to his second career. So any other final thoughts on the card for uh, Saturday? We have some two I just, stakes as well. Do you have any, any uh, hints in there? Yeah, I mean, look, Malathot, th- that was kind of her coming out party last year, and Pletcher has that in- in- incredibly talented filly, only has that one start under her belt with that pedigree, um, who's going to be interesting in that race. Um, I, I don't know. It's so early in the year for these two-year-olds. I just I want to wait and see what they do. I don't think it, it, I can crown anybody right now as a, as a true star um, from those cards that we're looking at. I'm just going to wait and see what happens on Saturday. Um, I'll just go back to Zandon on this, though, because I'm, I'm – I'm really intrigued by this horse. Like if he's going to win, if we do have this really wet track, he's going to have to eat a lot of slop potentially um, and have to deal with that coming back at him. And here it's going to be interesting what kind of trip Rosario tries to work out um, with him. So see where he keeps that horse. If he, you know, drawn from post two, if he tries to get him away from all that kickback, um, where he's placed early in that race. I'm, I'm fascinated by the cigar mile. Even it would have been fun to see baby Yoda in here I, because I was like, I could try and beat him anyway, um, in this spot. And after get, especially getting run down by double crown, but still without him in here, this, you know, with mind control being the last start of his career with these two, three-year-olds stand in white, barrio, um, who I both, I think both these ho- horses can be really talented players next year in the, in the handicap division. I, I love it. It's, it's kind of a sad time too. It's just the last big, grade one of the year after covering the circuit all year long. It's like, wow, how do we get here so fast? Um, <laughs> I'm a little sad that, that we're coming to a, a close here 
Um, and it's going to be one of my final shows. I think I have one more week of shows and then I'm off for the rest of the year. Um, but I'm looking forward to a, fa- a cigar mile day is always great. Um, it's going to be fun no matter what the weather's like. Um, so I- I'm very much looking forward to it and who stamps himself going forward. I think we will see potentially, um, certainly in that demoiselle, um, someone stamped themselves as a contender for the Oaks next year. And maybe I definitely like, agree. Yeah. Sorry to cut you off. What was the last thing you were going to say? No, I'm just, you know, I'm just looking forward to it. We'll see what happens in terms of the Remsen. Um, I, I, I want to wait. I, I don't have a strong opinion in there. Um, I want to see how it plays out, but uh, Tuskegee Airman is intriguing to me. I want to see if he can bring that form in from out of town, um, but I'm interested to see him run. All right. Well, they'll have to catch you on the, uh, the Fox shows to America's uh, day at the races to find out your final opinions for all of these races. Are you on the show on Saturday? Yeah, be on on Saturday. So yeah, we're on Fox Sports. Check your local listings for coverage, but um, should be a great day of action. And uh, fingers crossed, you never know, maybe the weatherman got it wrong and we'll have a nice day. But uh, regardless, that's going to be a fantastic card. All right. Well, looking forward to it myself. You can catch Greg on there talking about all of these races on Saturday. And thank you for taking the time to chat about this with me. Um, people can find you on Twitter at Real Greg Wolf. Are you a frequent tweeter or not so much? Um, I need to be better about it. I haven't been too, um, I have a newborn, so I've been uh, on pause a little bit. That's been taking up all my time. I have a two month old. (laughs) Um, Real life is more important. (laughs) Yes, but no, I am, I am on Twitter all the time. I watch it all the time and I see a lot of viewer uh, comments on our shows and everything. And I try and interact as often as I can. So absolutely. All right. Great. Well, Greg, thanks for taking the time and good luck this weekend, everybody. Thanks for having me on.